Hi there, welcome to the HydroGeoAnalyst video training series. My name is Brandon McNeil and I'm the software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll discuss the concept of electronic data deliverables or EDDs and how you can use them to pre-qualify and import large quantities of data into many database tables all at once. In a nutshell, the EDD workflow allows you to define a data input template or an EDD template which is based on the database structure itself. That means that the EDD template has built-in data validation criteria. For example, you wouldn't be able to enter alphabetical characters in a numeric field. Or if you have a list requirement for a particular database field, then only the listed values would be acceptable. The EDD template is then loaded into the HGA Quick Checker. The Quick Checker module acts sort of like a filter, allowing you to validate your actual data files against the EDD template and identify any errors. These errors would have to be resolved before eventually submitting the EDD, which takes the form of a .zip underscore HGA file. This is a special file format designed specifically for HGA. Since the EDD template, and by extension the EDD itself, are based on the database structure, no additional data mapping or validation is required. So once the .zip underscore HGA file is produced by the Quick Checker, it can be imported at the click of a button. So let's review this process from start to finish. The first step in the EDD workflow is to create the EDD template. This is done using the EDD template designer module, which you can access through the main modules menu. When you access this module through the main menu, you'll see the following window open up here. Using this window, you, you can select the database fields and tables that you plan on importing data into. The toolbar buttons at the top allow you to create new, open existing, and save EDD templates. There are also a couple of buttons to allow you to publish a mobile EDD and to email it to someone, but we'll be covering the mobile EDD capabilities in a future video. For now we're just going to focus on the regular EDD workflow. So what you'll want to do at this point is to review the data that you'll be importing. Using the EDD workflow you can actually import data from many different sources all at the same time. But in this example, I've conveniently saved all my data into one Excel spreadsheet. Each worksheet within the spreadsheet represents data that will be imported to a different table within the database. As you can see, I have lithology data, well construction data like screens, casings, and annular fill depths, water level data, and a whole bunch of water quality data as well. So with that in mind, I'll return to the EDD template designer and select the appropriate tables. Based on the data that I, I have in my spreadsheet, I'm going to need to select the lithology table, a whole bunch of the well construction tables, and several of the monitoring event tables as well. We select the tables and apply them as part of the EDD template simply by selecting them from the list on the left hand side and then loading them in using the blue arrow button in the middle. Once each of the data tables has been loaded into the EDD template, we can expand the list and see each of the individual stations within those tables. And there's also some information about each data field uh, listed on the right hand side. We can see, for example, the, da the data type associated with each field and whether there are any units associated with them. We can also see if there are any conditions associated with that feel field. For example, you can see if the field requires numeric values, whether null values are allowed or not, whether the result has to be a unique value, or whether there are any list requirements. The conditions displayed here initially are based entirely on the database structure itself, but it's also possible to include some additional conditions in the EDD template which may not be requirements of the database field itself. For example, I'm going to be importing some water level data, and since I'm reporting this water level data as depth to water levels, I can be confident that all of these measurements should be positive values. So what I can do is include an additional advanced condition to specify that the data must be greater than a value of zero. Now, if any of the imported values are less than zero, they'll automatically be highlighted and I can either review or fix that data before importing it. Once the necessary tables have been selected and any additional data validation criteria have been applied, you can save the EDD template to your computer by clicking on the Save button here. 
You can then browse to the location on your computer where you'd like to save that EDD template. I'm just going to save mine to my desktop, and as you can see, I've already created one here that I'm going to overwrite. Once we've saved the EDD template, we can close the EDD template designer module and then access the quick checker module. The quick checker module can be accessed by clicking on this green check, ma check mark right here in the toolbar, but it can also be accessed through the main modules menu. Recall that the quick checker is a standalone program that acts sort of like a filter, identi identifying any bits of, of data that do not conform to the data validation criteria built into our EDD template. So here's the quick checker um, interface. Whenever you open up this module, it will open up in a brand new window. The first thing that we'll do in the quick checker is load up our EDD template, and we'll do that by creating a new quick checker file by clicking this button right here in the toolbar. Once we do that, then this window opens up here, and essentially all we have to do is click this Browse button in order to browse to the location of our EDD template file, which I've found right here. At this point, I could also select an Excel spreadsheet file that we would like to import, but for now I'm just going to select the Manual option. So we'll click OK, and as you can see, all of the tables that we had selected as part of our EDD template are now, now shown in their own tabs at the top. And if we select any of these tabs, then we'll notice that the columns uh, listed in the main window here represent each of the fields within the selected table. Now, if you want, you can enter data manually at this stage. That's always an option. Um, but for us, we're going to import our, all of our data from a spreadsheet. And you can import data from a spreadsheet by clicking on this button in the toolbar, the Import Microsoft Excel File button. So we'll just browse to and select the file that we're going to be importing data from. And once the spreadsheet is selected, we now have to map the data into our EDD template. The aim of this step is to map the columns from the spreadsheet to the correct tables and fields within the EDD template and by extension within the HGA interface, or within the HGA database. This is the same kind of process that you work through in the regular import process. And just like the regular import process, all the fields that are highlighted in green here represent primary keys for each table, and these absolutely have to be mapped 100%. You cannot leave them empty. So let's just take a minute here to browse through each of these tables and select the correct worksheet within our Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and ensure that all of our fields have been mapped correctly. Please note as you're working through this step here that the EDD, in the EDD workflow, it's assumed that all of the data that you're importing into the project has the same units that are built into the database. The EDD workflow does not support automatic unit conversions, so keep that in mind. Once all of the fields have been mapped, click OK, and the data from your spreadsheet will be loaded into the EDD template. At this point, any data records which do not conform to the database conditions will be automatically highlighted. A list of errors will be included on the right-hand side, and any individual field or table with an error should also be highlighted with a red symbol in the main window, and any tab that contains errors will be highlighted with a red flag. All of these errors have to be resolved before the data can be imported into the database. So, in this example, we have two chemical names which aren't recognized by the database since there's a list requirement for the chemical name field. We'll need to update the TVOC and the xylene data labels uh, in order to change them to values recognized by the database. And here in the lithology table, we'll also notice that there's a little typo here. Someone likely was trying to type in clay here, but they instead they accidentally typed in an R. And since that soil type is not recognized by the HGA database, it's been identified as an error. So we'll have to resolve these before we can actually import all of this data. 
So to resolve the first error with, with our parameter results with our chemical names, we can use in the toolbar menu, uh, from the main menu, there is a find and replace function. So we'll, we'll activate the find and replace function and we're going to replace TVOC with total petroleum hydrocarbons. Since essentially that's the, the equivalent chemical name that HGA actually recognizes. So we'll find TVOC and we'll replace it with total petroleum hydrocarbons. We click the replace all button and as you can see all of the errors associated with TVOC have automatically been updated and, and they're now resolved. So we'll do the same thing for xylene. We're going to find all xylene values and we're going to replace them with xylene's total. We'll click replace all and all of those errors have been resolved now. So we can close this small find and replace functionality and here in the lithology tab let's simply select from the available values and we're going to replace C-R-A-Y with C-L-A-Y. As you can see now there are no errors listed on the table on the right hand side which means we're now ready to validate and submit the data. This validation and submission of the data is accomplished by clicking on the Validate and Submit button right here in the toolbar. What happens when we click the Validate and Submit button is that uh, the Quick Checker will perform a final validation check to ensure that there are no errors, and then it compiles the data into a .zip underscore HGA file, which can then be imported into HGA with just a few clicks. So we'll browse to the location where we want to save our, our EDD import file. We'll save it as validated data, click save. At this point, uh, the EDD input file has been created. We can now exit the Quick Checker and return to HGA. And you can either save the Quick Checker file or not. I'm going to not save it this time. Now back here in HGA, in order to import the EDD submission file, we're going to access the data transfer system. We're going to select EDD as the data type, and we'll click Next. And now the EDD import window opens up. All we have to do at this point is click on this uh, button here to open up a file browser, and we can select our validated data file, click Open, and it will automatically indicate, well, basically a validation log, indicating how many new records and updated records there will be in various database tables. All that you would have to do now is click the import button and you're, you would be done. So we have just successfully imported uh, approximately 500 individual data records into a variety of different data tables and uh, it, it only took us a couple of minutes. And what's better is that we, we can be 100% positive that the data that we've just imported is fully valid validated against the database requirements. So that's it for the EDD workflow video. In the next video, I'll discuss the Query Builder module, which is the module that you use to retrieve data from the database after it's been imported. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more HGA training videos.